I've covered flying long haul on economy on United, American, and even Hawaiian recently, but it's been years since I flew Delta any significant distance. Sure, I've covered the shuttle service, I've praised the A220s and criticized the airline as a whole, but what's the actual long haul product like? How does it stack up with the other US airlines? Let's find out on this 767-300ER from Honolulu to Minneapolis. Aloha from Waikiki. Much as it pained me, my epic escape to paradise needed to come to an end. I searched for any reasonable premium award seats on United or American, but there was nothing. So I paid $324 for a one-way ticket to Chicago via Minneapolis. Not great, but with airline prices going crazy this year, I was fine with it. Delta departs from Terminal 2 of the Honolulu Airport. The check-in area is open air. Having done a lot of shopping at Costco, I needed to check a bag. It cost $30. Right, this is a domestic flight and I don't have the Delta credit card. Ouch. I walked over to my terminal, which again was through an outside hallway. There is a Priority Pass lounge in the basement, but it's the worst reviewed lounge I've ever seen, with no food and only juice and soda, so I didn't bother. Instead, I watched a rainbow. Delta has a new app, and something is definitely up with it. Delta has live bag tracking, which is nice. I got an app notification that my bag was loaded on board the plane, before the inbound plane had even landed. Are you sure about that? Great. When I went to go track the bag, the app crashed. That's why I have air tags, folks. My inbound flight finally landed from LAX, but there was still a while before boarding, so I went drinking. And so we drink. Kona Brewing Company is great, and I was having a great relaxing time until I got a text from Delta that the flight was delayed to the departure time, and it offered me options to change my flight. What the hell is going on, Delta? Am I drunk here, or is it you, Delta? Go home. You're drunk. Boarding started well enough, but was halted in the middle of Comfort Plus because someone needed assistance and we were told to sit back down, though nobody did. I finally boarded the aircraft. Business class is the very old style with no privacy. Next came a large Comfort Plus section. The economy cabin is in a 232 layout, which is great if you don't want a middle seat. I had seat 21A, an exit row seat. Legroom was pretty great. Normally you'd have to pay for these seats, but I'm able to get main cabin one boarding and preferred seat selection on Delta as a work perk. Normal seats have 31 to 32 inches of pitch. The seats also have full and USB power. They passed out eye shades and headphones, so props for that and we push back five minutes early. There was major runway construction, so we had to taxi for a while. There's a mix of both civilian and military traffic at the airport. Flying time was 7 hours and 45 minutes at 37,000 feet. I'm going to pause a bit on our takeoff as the view of Oahu at sunset was truly spectacular. Then we and the sun parted ways and headed in opposite directions around the Earth to meet up again in a few hours. Delta has made a big point about having rolled out free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi is great! Well, unfortunately, that's not the complete picture. Planes with GoGo Wi-Fi currently don't get the free Wi-Fi, which includes not only the 767, but also the brand new A220s. Supposedly, the 767s will get upgraded with free Wi-Fi before the end of 2023, perhaps even before this video goes live, but temper your expectations. At least there's free messaging. 
Delta does have their standard in-seat entertainment, which was responsive and had a decent selection. The moving map is also quite good. Most of the US airlines cut meals to Hawaii during the pandemic, but it's slowly returning. Delta only serves a full meal on the longer flights to Minneapolis and Atlanta. We were served silverware and a bottle of water. The tray in the exit row was in the armrest. There was a choice of Hawaiian chicken or pineapple risotto. Nice, I appreciate the Hawaiian flair. I went for the pineapple risotto, which, while definitely not traditional, I can imagine being quite good. It was served with a pineapple potato salad that was pretty bad and pretty bland. The pineapple risotto. Good God, that was some of the worst plain food I've ever had. Okay, I think it may actually be the worst. Just look at it. Does this look appetizing at all? Bland, overcooked, oily, it was truly terrible. For some reason, I get a lot of critical comments whenever I complain about food, but just look at it. Look. You have to look. <laughs> Who cooked this? Come here, you. Taste that. It's bland. It's disgusting. The only good thing in the whole meal was the Hawaiian cookie, which was actually quite tasty. Alcohol was fortunately included to wash away that culinary atrocity, and I was handed a can of white wine. Fortunately, I was able to get just shy of six hours of sleep. I did get a bit cold next to the emergency exit, and the provided blanket came in handy. Since I slept for so long, I missed the breakfast service, but given the last food I'd just had, I didn't feel a strong desire to ask a flight attendant for a meal. The cloud cover was very thick as we began our descent into Minneapolis, only breaking at the very last moment. There were no more rainbows here as we taxied to the gate. So Delta's long haul on the 767-300ER. The seats are in a favorable configuration. The seats themselves were fine with in-seat entertainment, power, and hopefully soon free Wi-Fi. The crew was quite friendly, and the ability to track your bag status, assuming it works correctly, is great. But something is clearly going wrong behind the scenes in the IT department. And while a meal and drink is appreciated, that meal now takes the crown of the worst thing I've ever had on a plane. Look, I know Delta has a lot of fanboys and I'm likely upsetting here, but this is not okay. Sure, I guess it's technically better than nothing that you may get on other airlines or routes. Perhaps it was just a bad one-off dish and other Delta food is better. But I recommend grabbing something to eat first if you end up flying Delta back from Hawaii. If you want to see a more positive review of Delta, you can click here to hear me gush about the A220. Otherwise, I'm still not home yet, so it's time for my final flight on the A319 back to Chicago, which for some reason was literally falling apart. So yeah, you can guess how that review is gonna go. Or check out the whole Escape to Paradise playlist here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.